subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for the latest film interviews, features and recommendations on the movies that matter. Anushka, Anvita, Karnesh, so good to see you. Um, I want to start with Anushka and Karnesh. Guys, it's been, what, less than 40 days by the time that Bulbul will, you know, since Patal Lok, that Bulbul will drop on Netflix. Um, you guys are on a roll. What, are you like the hardest working producers in Bollywood? Seems like it right now. <laughs> and with some love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And love, yeah. You know, um, Anvita, the film, um, I had a chance to watch it. Bulbul is, of course, uh, a film that, that marries so many different elements, right? It's There is mythology, there's folklore, there's, there's the supernatural, there is a, a very strong feminist statement. Um, it's, it's really an interesting cocktail of... of, of elements. I want to ask you, why was this the story that you wanted to tell? Why was this a story you so badly wanted to tell? You were telling me earlier that it's a, it's something that's been with you for 12 years. So actually, when I set out to write, there wasn't an agenda that, you know, this needs to have this kind of messaging or this is what it needs to say. I just uh, was, as you know, I've been a commissioned writer and a lyricist for some time now in the industry. And uh, what happens is you're always writing for other people, other people's stories. And there's certain kind of stories that um, excite me and move me and make me happy. And um, and so I decided to actually, that was the starting point. There was no agenda. And just so instinctively, I guess, when you've lived in a certain kind of a world for a certain number of years, you've lived a life, uh, your storytelling carries a certain kind of uh, coded messaging because that is the messaging that is moving you and you're thinking about it. So I was spinning a yarn, but in the yarn there was these little embroidered relevant details which organically came into it. So that was what happened. You know, Arushka, the last time we spoke, um, you told me that that for Karnesh and you, the, the ethos of the company was that you want to make the kind of films that you all watch and you think, why why isn't anyone making these kind of films it's it's the kind of films that you'd like to watch but you don't see enough people making those kind of films but specifically when anvita came along with the with the subject of bulbul can you talk about what it was specifically that kind of spoke to you and where and and you know and made you go you know this is something that we want to get behind actually uh, the story is that anvita spoke to karnesh uh, many many years ago even before karnesh would have probably thought that, you know, he wants to get into production or I right. had any plans of, you know, doing it then. I mean, there was just something that he, him and me would discuss when we would look at, like like you said, when we would, we would watch watch films like, why aren't we doing this kind of stuff? But it wasn't something that mm. we planned. And she'd met him when he was still in the Merchant Navy. I think, Anish, you should tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think this story, uh, Anvita told me about when I was still in the Merchant Navy and, you know, uh, I, I, I really was fascinated with films. That was the only sort of entertainment we, uh, we had on the ship. And, uh, you know, she had this uh, story and she said, you know, would you like to read it? And I said, yeah, why not? And uh, I read it and, you know, what, what I really, what stuck with me from then till the time we made the film was the simplicity of the story and the, you know, beautiful narrative it had, almost like a fairy tale. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Del Toro, you know, I've, I've Pan's Labyrinth is one of my favorite films. It kind of uh, reminded me of the world Pan's Labyrinth kind of created and I was like, you know, uh, I will, if at all I, you know, become a producer, this is something I would want to do, you know, and uh, we were lucky that she didn't give it to anybody else. And it, it stayed with her. And then, you know, when we did eventually post NH10, I think we decided uh, we should give it a try. We met for a coffee when NH10 happened. And he said, you remember that story you had given me? Uh, I, I have turned producer. I want to meet uh, Anushka, what themes, what themes Anushka spoke to you? Um, I mean, was this, was this Karnesh's passion project? Uh, or, or was it was it that you also saw in it things that that made you go? This is something that that we should uh, do. You know, for me, when uh, he he spoke to me about the story, I honestly had no idea that Anvita even wanted to direct. 
um uh, anvita had written flori uh, for us and anvita and me have worked in the past also in many films she wrote patiala house also and uh, there was another script that anvita had written which i was supposed to do as my second film actually so i mean me and anvita go back a long way and that's how karnesh uh, met anvita but she never discussed with me uh, that she wanted to be a director or anything um but when karnesh came to me with the script and he said listen the script is there what do you think about it and i and i read it i said yeah this is amazing so anvita has written it i'm like i was actually a little bit surprised that anvita had written it because i had never read anything like this that anvita had had ever written so i actually was like anvita has written this is like yeah and i'm like oh, wow wow and he's like yeah um, and you know she wants to direct i said anvita wants to direct she's like he's like yeah so then i think karnesh and me had a discussion for me what really stood out in this in this story was that i thought it was like you know those um, grandma tales that we that we hear right all in the lore think, right uh, folklore in, yeah if it, it's like folklore yeah and it's uh, and it's in every culture you have indians you know these stories like indian grandmothers tell these stories mexican grandmothers so it's it's all over the world but uh, the maybe the characters and the entities change their names change they called by some other name like depending on the culture so to me that yeah. really stood out i thought it was like that but it was saying so much more despite it had despite the narrative that it had so that really uh, struck with me of course there were certain things that we felt like we need to you know uh, do do with it we need to change and i think anvita was on on board with all of that so she she is actually a really great collaborator in that sense like she's she's uh, not an insecure uh, writer director like she's like okay let me hear what everyone's saying okay fine i i understand okay i understand what you're saying so i think she's got mm. that um, uh, experience of so many of so many years being commissioned writer so i think you it it was just a very easy process to get into with her and so i felt confident that you know because she's been part of this for so long and the script was so amazing i was like yeah we we really must um we must make this happen but it wasn't uh it wasn't um it wasn't supposed to i mean i even considered whether i want to i want to do it at the time if i would want right. to uh like act act in it Acting. but i just done pari and i done philori so i was like you know i can't uh, do the same you know that <laughs> bhuto wala kahani again uh, so yeah so that's how much i liked it actually yeah i even considered right. doing it myself but you know i was uh, you know i had this question to, for you anushka um when you're when you're listening to a script is are there two switches in your head you know is there the actor switch and the producer switch and and you know when you're listening to a script are you you know how are you deciding this one i want to do as as an actor and and i'll produce it as well and this one i'll produce but i don't think it's it's for me to act i mean how does one how do those calls come see i mean uh, uh like i said earlier also uh, we never turn producers uh, to make films for me you know so right. um in the past whenever we've developed a script like say philori philori was not a full fledged i mean there was an idea and there was like a sort of story there but then i knew that i want to do this and then we developed it for me to for me to act in it you know um similarly even for Par, even pari um you know what you want to do when you hear it bulbul was a yeah. film which i felt like it was a really interesting film for us to do it was just a thing that would, would do i want to do it was just like a moment of maybe like uh, two three days of just thinking do i want to do this but it doesn't make sense but i don't think i don't think it comes from the place of um, let's cast for this film first first you right. decide whether you want to produce the film or not and then mm. whether i will act in it or some other actor acts in it is just purely based on who's right for that particular script you know i think right. that's how we've always uh, done it and that's how we will continue to do it because for us it's just about um, creating good content and in, and making sure that we are choosing the best aspects everything that we choose for that it's it's the best so whether i'm the best part for it or i'm not i mean the, even those decisions have to be taken uh, very clearly um yeah you know what struck me about the film is just how cinematic it is you know the visual palette of the film just the colors the imagery the atmospherics it's it's really a transportive sort of experience because this is a film that um that is set in the late 19th century and uh and early 20th century and it's and it's beautiful and it's evocative um was that uh, amita i mean um was that important for you that it look in a certain way and um you know and you were lucky to have collaborators who kind of you know um gave you that yes. 
Yes, so um, that is how the story was always meant to be. That's how it was written. In fact, uh, my DOP sometimes said, you know, I can, uh, your your frame is there even on your pages. You know, it's, mm-hmm. there is a certain thing, there was a certain vision. Um, I had those ideas of, because it's neoclassical period, I wanted Raja Ravi Verma like uh, colors and palette and lighting like Kadavaji, all those kind of things I had. But what is incredible was that first off, my producers, whatever I wanted, however I wanted to do, they allowed me to do it. You know, so because you can have a vision and uh, you might not get a chance to actually explore that vision fully. And uh, my hands were never tight. And then I had the most incredible DOP and the production designer and the costume designer. Every HOD that came in board was equally excited about the vision and they just took it uh, and ran with it so i was i was really blessed because it just became it became everything that it was meant to be so. anushka and uh Karnesh, what what you've done in a sense and correct me if i'm wrong you've built this company where you're also kind of um you know working with with collaborators that have gone on to become friends and you'll continue i mean you are you know, uh, Ansha, of course, directed um, Filori for you. Ansha is the creative producer on this film. Sudeep wrote uh, NH10. Sudeep was the creator, the showrunner of, of Patal Lok. Anvita, of course, wrote dialogues on Pari and Filori. She comes in to direct this. Is this, um, you know, is this what you is this part of the plan sort of you know to, to kind of create this this company where where you work with friends, where you work with trusted collaborators and, um, you know, and, and in a sense kind of create this team? You know, actually, uh, Rajiv, if you remember, that was the first interview that Karnesh and me had done with you at our uh, office. Yeah. Um, and yeah. this is what we discussed with you. And this is what we said at that time that we want to work with, uh, we want to be able to use our position to be able and leverage that position to be able to, you know, work with new talent. And uh, mm. you also, I mean, there's also Proshit who who wrote and directed Pari and yeah. then he, he he also directed Patalok. And actually there are many, many more right. people also behind the scenes who've done that um, and who've mm. been working with us like consistently. I think it's just that whatever we said at that time, now those things are happening and then that's for people, really for people to see. I think this is, Anvita would be uh, our third first time director and mm. um, except like Navdeep Singh who just done one film like before uh, before NH10. So I mean we have yeah. really whatever we said like I mean our, our uh, we, we uh, put 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 the money where our mouth is you know and so it's, it's right. yeah so I think uh, that's what we went out to do we wanted to be able to influx the industry with new talent because you know all these people are the people that we believe in um, and over the years they've become friends they've become people we can trust uh, and yeah, and we are a very collaborative sort of, very democratic sort of uh, setup at Clean Slate, you know. Uh, and I think that's why we, uh, we, that helps us and allows us to be open-minded and allows us to be sort of um, uh, relaxed in the way we do things and make people feel like, you know, we're all in this together. We're making this together. We're all, we're all involved. And I think that's a very positive way and, and a very healthy way in which uh, you can work. How do you all feel emboldened and more empowered after the success of Patalo? Um, yeah, I think it does, right? Uh, as as creators, what you want ideally is the people who are putting the money behind it to believe that you can pull off something of that sort. So I think success only helps. Um, uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, seeing the track record we've had, I think we've kind of uh, positioned ourselves as makers who can tell varied kind of stories, you know. So I think right now it is, that's all we can do. Now it is up to the people who are backing stories, uh, the studios, the OTT platforms, to realize that and, you know, try something different. And, you know, hopefully they have the trust of, uh, you know, uh, material working um, for everybody. Yeah. I think we started yeah. off like that. When we started off, we always wanted to do clutter breaking stuff. And what success does is that uh, th- people, it's just, that's just how the case is. Success makes people see things differently. So uh, the faith improves in you. And I think uh, we've not done anything differently. I'll be very honest with you. And not, it's not like we're going to do anything differently post Patalok also. 
we we named the company clean slate on because of this it's called clean slate because every project will start on a clean slate and uh, mm -hmm. there'll be no baggage from the previous previous production so that you truly can be true to the story that you're making and true to your uh, uh, your vision for the company which will always be to create clutter breaking content now i just think people have a lot more faith in us that we will create that content for you and we will do it in the best way possible you know because we are we are not uh, here just to make bucks like we are here yeah. like anvita said like we are storytellers slash like producers yeah. i mean we are creative producers in that sense you know so for us these things are very important so of course success helps in that regard and no and also uh, if i may add to yeah. what uh, you know anushka was saying that i think it's very important uh, in the current ecosystem apart from say producers for also studios to be ambitious i think you know ambition Absolutely. is something uh, uh, you know which which will take us all and the whole ecosystem forward and i to think to push the envelope uh, constantly it's, 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 yeah. yes and it's i think it's my humble appeal to all the studios out there not to lose that to have people in the right yeah. places who have given us ambition because yeah. you know filmmakers today and are ambitious and they use the platform you yeah. know and they are ambitious and if given the free hand if if uh, you know given the trust i think we can really really tell uh, cross cultural uh, stories stories yeah to to anvita and anushka um you know we've been talking for a long time about how how things will change if you put women in leadership roles uh, certainly on a film set in a you know in a film production um, that's happening now we are seeing that happen you know i mean just if you talk about netflix i mean in the last couple of months they've had uh, they, they've had a bunch of films that have been directed by um, you know by by women i mean you've had ruchi direct uh, guilty there was um, uh, there, there there was there, there's you of course and there's suni who made uh, uh, ye ballet we've had we've had women as producers there's anushka of course alankrita Uh, um, what what has changed? I mean, do you see do you see a change um, actually taking place? Anushka, will you go first? Uh, you mean like where do you you mean generally or? Uh, yeah, generally, just yeah, everywhere. You know, I mean, there, of platform. course, it came up. Uh, I, I think just everywhere. You know, on 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 every. I mean, in, in Net, at Netflix, we're seeing it happen. They're actively pursuing projects where where women are in leadership roles. Uh, but but it seems like it's happening outside as well. You know, you're hearing constantly. I mean, what uh, what what Zoya and and her team of women did at uh, at Amazon with uh, Make Made in Heaven and and other filmmakers as well. Even on the big screen, um, it seems like like there is there are women now in leadership roles, which which was a big and a very valid complaint for a long time. You know, it was my dream actually when I started off uh, right at the beginning. I ha remember having these conversations with you, with you in the beginning of my career also that yeah. I would love to be in a time in the industry where we do not look at the association that women have with a film to be something special and to be something that's standing sure. out. Or you know, it would just be as normal as how you have male producers, male directors. I mean, just something as normal as that. And I think nowadays, it's it's getting there. You're not like. Um, uh, you you are getting those opportunities um, also i think also i think a big part is also because of these digital platforms i'll be very honest with you because yeah. it's giving more opportunities to so many more writers so many more directors to come forward with their stories and giving them that platform so what it's doing is it's going to have that effect in theatricals also you will have directors like anvita coming from these platforms uh, like ruchi coming from these platforms and then you know creating creating movies and just you know enjoying both both these worlds so i think um, mm. it's a beautiful time to be in um, i i hope that even female actors can have lot more roles you know um, better roles like better roles continue to get written for them for theatricals because i think they we're not there yet um, it's still there's still that the still the options are much much lesser but i think yes i think for um, i think for uh, for um, you know uh, technicians for for directors i think this is it's really the world is really opening opening up and as, as it should i mean why the hell not you know right and look at the kind yeah, of successful yeah. work they've done i mean that's that's True. what's uh, that's what's amazing so it's great to have right. different point of views yeah and vikas my take on this is a, is a, it's a mixed bag because i've always believed that um, actually gender has nothing to do with intellect and Absolutely. i wish the whole world saw it like that you know because for me it's inherently how i think so i'm always very taken aback 
if gender is mentioned when it comes to a skill because no one says uh, male director male lyricist true but people are very quick to say female lyricist and female writer and female director and then you realize that there is such an imbalance that it becomes a thing of like anushka yeah. says Tangs people out. are it's like a big deal but it's not because when um, you're telling a story your gender is is the, some of the most sensitive writing a lot of men have done that you know gulzar sahab has done such beautiful sensitive writing so the first few composers that came to the industry when the talkies started were women so there is a mm. whole lot of strange examples there which uh, so this entire argument to be falls flat and it's tragic that it's it's something to be across because it's so rare people right. should uh, be telling stories or the only thing i think as a female uh, storyteller what you bring to the table is like um, i'm from small town india and i'm punjabi so mere ko uske bare mein jo pata hai thoda sa zyada pata hoga aapse so like that being a woman there is something that i know which i'm sure as a man you know something about being a man which i don't know that's the only difference yeah. in the story tell pressure right? perspective so, you know, yeah. different point of view yeah it's just that yeah. Yeah, it's you don't yes anvita's version of punjab and there's that sudeep sharma's version of punjab so you know there you Correct. have it, two different perspectives we have to both we are happy to have both yeah. punjab will be populated by ghosts so <laughs> demons <laughs> Well, you know, really, all the best for Bulbul. The the film, of course, drops on Netflix on the twenty fourth of June. Um, I, I think you'll have I think you'll have made something special. I really do think you've created something special. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank so you so much, Rajiv.